All right, in the last video, we uh, displayed tags associated with a given event in the event details view. Um, I hinted that there was an error in our code related to adding tags to this view. So let me show you exactly what that is now. Um, you know, we only have these three tags in our system, right? So uh, currently, so these are the only three options I have available. Currently, this event is uh, code with pride is tagged with all three of them. What if I try to go to my add tag form here and add a tag twice? So let's see what happens. Let's try to add the Java tag twice. Okay, so I've just posted that form. And slowly but surely, we should get an exception here. And here we go. So uh, we have a uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core DB update exception. And if we look at some more details here, we have a message. Let's see. Kind of hard to uh, parse out exactly what's in here, but um, I can tell you. That's uh, let's see. It's a tag controller line seventy-five. So let's go. Let's go to see what's going on there. That's where we are right here. And so essentially, it's when we're trying to save this new event tag object. So recall that anytime we submit this form, we're asking our application to create a new event tag object and save it to the database. And that event tag object will have the event that has been selected along with the tag that has been selected, and it will it will uh, uh, try to save that to the database. Now the exact issue here. I'm going to go ahead and stop the application is if we go to our database here and look at our event tags table we'll see that um, we just tried to relate event id one to tag id one those are the ids of uh, the uh, the um, uh, code of the pride event and the java tag and the issue here is that we cannot have a duplicate entry with the same values in both columns so we cannot have one one in one place and then down below one one in another place the reason is that those two columns together are a composite primary key for our application and so by trying to relate a tag to an event more than one time we're essentially trying to duplicate the primary key that of course is not allowed so uh, i need to put in some code just to deal with that specific issue i'm going to close out here and i'm going to come back into exactly the place where this uh, exception occurred and so what I want to do here is I want to make sure that when I'm doing this this um, this uh, form handling and I'm creating a new event tag that I'm not doing that if the given event and tag already exist. Now there are multiple ways you could do this. You could say on the um, on on the form rendering you could filter out all of the tags from the dropdown that are already tagged to that event so the user couldn't select them. Uh, that that could still you know through some other means result in some errors. You know if someone was using if you sort of had a you know, someone kind of submitting data in a different way, not through the form. Um, it's it's probably the most sort of defensive way to handle this is to deal with it in the post handler here, the post action method. So what I want to do is before I go ahead and create this new event tag object and save it, I want to check to see if a given uh, event tag exists for these two objects. So what I want to do is I want to say uh, list event tag, and this is going to be called, I'm just going to call this existing items. And this is a collection that's just because it's easier for us to query that collection. Um, but uh, um, it, it really won't matter in the end. So I want to query the database context. Oops. So I'm going to look for all event tags where, and I need a Lambda expression here, uh, where first the event ID matches the um, ID that I've had passed in. Okay, and then I also want to see if there, from that collection, if there's uh, any event tags in that collection, that subset, where the tag ID matches to. And I can just convert that to a list. Um, again, we wouldn't have more than one of these, but uh, it's just a little bit easier to work with the list here. So I have a list now. If this list has anything in it, then I should not try to create a new event tag. So I'm going to say if existing items dot count if it's equal to zero, then I can go ahead and do the work of creating these event tags or this event tag rather. 
Okay. So to reiterate, what's going on? Before I do the work of creating a new event tag and saving it, I check by querying for existing event tags that have the events and tag IDs matching those passed in in my, in my uh, view model. If there's not an events tag with those two exact same IDs, I go ahead and create the new one. Otherwise, I just basically don't do anything. So it's kind of a, the, from the user standpoint, if they try to add something twice, uh, they wouldn't really notice, but we wouldn't have an exception. The tag would still be on the event. All's good, right? So let's go ahead and test this out. And hopefully now, when we try to do the exact same thing, say add Java to the code with right event, which uh, should not be tagged twice, then we will hopefully not get an error. Cool, that seems to work. Great, so just a little bit of uh, additional data uh, cleanup and error handling that you should be aware of as you work in your application. Um, the next video that we'll look at is going to be uh, displaying items with a given tag. So we currently have this all tags view, and uh, we have a way of viewing the tags that are on a given event, right? We can go in here and look at the tags that are in a given event. We don't have a given, we don't have a way of looking at the events associated with a given tag. We'll tackle that one next time.